People can take doubt one or two ways. You know, some people get delivered doubt from someone else and that absolutely makes them crumble, cripples them. They stop chasing their dreams. They start believing the doubt expressed from someone else. For me, it works differently. And as soon as I hear that, it gives me more energy to prove them wrong. I can sit around and wait for stuff to happen. I can get out there and make things happen. And that is massively important in any walk of life. It don't matter who you are or what you do, you've got to get after it, you've got to chase it, you've got to make it happen yourself because no one's going to get gifted to you. You're going to have to work for it and those people who are working and those people who are just grinding and they are going the extra hour, doing the extra mile, they're the ones that are going to be at the top. Don't make yourself fall short. You know, it's it's so easy to, to accept that nothing is going to happen for you. You know, that you're just going to be another number. That's the easiest way. You know, get a job nine till five and that's easy. You know, it's, it's accept that something can happen, but you have to put the work in. It's just, don't be scared of hard work. Let that fire that you've got in your belly, you know, translate into something good. You know, if you've got that passion and that drive, don't ever stop, you know, if you stop, I guarantee you, like if you stop when you're 20, by the time you're 40, you're gonna resent whatever that reason was you stopped. Nobody knows how capable they are. A lot of people go, oh, Adam, I couldn't do what you do. Yes, you can, if you want it enough. And I say, how much you want it? Are you willing to go through the discomfort of it? You know, are you willing to, to face your fears and potentially failure? It all comes back to failure, everything. So what's the true fear? Failure. And once you can face failure, in the eye, then then you're indestructible. I think having a purpose is that thing that that makes us tick, that gets us up every day and gets us over the hump of opposition and adversity. And the reason that I champion adversity and opposition is because I think for the most part in life, people pretty much know what to do when things go right, right? Like when things go right, they know how to feel, they know how to act, how to react. But it's when that opposition and that adversity comes and it creates a level of misunderstanding, right? Now the vision is blurred. Now you don't have clarity about what you're supposed to do. Now you question if your existence matters. And I think when you have a purpose, it's powerful because in the midst of the opposition, it makes you realize that you've been put here for a certain reason. And so me, once I tapped into my purpose of once I thought it was football, Right. But when I started speaking, I'll never forget the day I got the exact same feeling backstage that I used to get before I ran out on the field to play football. And that's when I knew, like, this is my purpose. This is what I've been put here to do. And so the opposition, the adversity, the challenges is just a part of the process. It's going to make me a better person. But my purpose, I can't let anything stop or detour me. If you want an easy life, then fine, man. It's, it's... It's not going to be rewarding, you know, doing something easy, you get little reward from it. Doing something hard and succeeding it, doing a marathon, climbing Mount Everest, lifting 500 kilos, putting 230 kilos above your head, those are extremely hard things to do, but the reward is never ending. You know, making that historic lift, the historic whatever it is, is never ending. You know, so for Tom and I, strongest brothers in history, first brothers in history to ever make the world's strongest man final. That's never ending. Everything we do in life is about taking the short-term discomfort, you know, and that whether that's sending an extra email, staying a bit longer at work, whatever it is. If you want to achieve a goal, let's say you want to run the London Marathon, you know that every week you're going to have to do some training to achieve that. And that is about, yeah, you're not going to want to, but by the time it comes to putting your trainers on going out the door, your mind's going to tell you and enforce every reason why you shouldn't do it. And it's devious, it'll tell you to go and check your computer, do this, do that. And that's when we have to switch this off. You have to switch the mind off and follow the process. And that's something that I learned from an early age, but something that was further enforced in the military. You have to follow process, follow your heart, switch off this, which is the program and that, you know, through that you will achieve your aim. If you can take care of the small stuff, 
you know, about doing everything, whether that's washing the dishes before you go to bed at night so you don't come down to a whole mess in the kitchen, whatever it is, making your bed in the morning, simple things. If you can do the simple things, the big stuff takes care of itself. That I felt as if, if I do this well, I can get my family in a better situation. If I do this well, I can get my mother off the double shift at Wendy's. If I do this well, I can get my own bed. If I do this well, I can get my grandmother a better living condition. If I do this well, maybe I can stop my uncles from selling drugs. You know what, you've got like a devil and an angel on your shoulder all the time and that devil just needs to be, knock it off because you're always going to have these doubts. You know what, I come in here some days, I'll be training for a fight and I'll train three days in a row and I'll be on fire and I'll have one bad day, which is expected when you're doing like an eight week camp or anything like that. And you have one bad day and that bad day outweighs the good three days by a mile and I'll go on thinking, oh, what am I doing here? I'm going to get battered in this fight. But then you come back in the next morning, you have one good session again and that doubt's gone again. So you just, it, it's hard to, to get rid of them demons. And um, I think any athlete who says that they never have any sort of doubts is, is lying. I think everyone's got one that creeps in somewhere, but it's the ones who just manage to just push them on one side and keep the tunnel vision and keep the... What I do is I visualize after the fight. I don't visualize what's gonna happen in the fight because I never know. I just always visualize what it's like to win after the fight, what I'll be doing after the fight, how I'll feel after the fight. And I think doing that, that always helps you stay mentally strong. Oh, adversity always prepare you. You know, you have to go through those things in order to see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I don't think anything is gonna just be like this throughout your life. You know, you have to go through that difficult, overcome obstacle. You know, because it's, it's a testament of your character, of who you are and how you're able to deal with certain things in order to get yourself back on that playing field. It was that mission, that goal that I would always focus on. Because if you don't have a focus on a goal or a mission, and this is generally in life, you will find that you end up becoming a victim of your circumstances. You get lost in the journey. Something happens, something major happens, and you become a victim of your circumstances because you've got nothing bigger pulling you through. So really, for me, it's all, always been about the fact that I visualise where I want to be when times are tough, when times are hard, when things are going really wrong. I visualise, I've got a vision of where I want to be and it's that one thing that pulls me through and I don't get bogged down in the situation. Pain's got to go away at some point, so what it means to me is it's a process you have to go through to make you stronger. Everybody goes through it, it's going to come into your life. As long as you're ready for it, as long as you're prepared to go through it, then it'll change and it'll give you success. When you have to rise above the pain, everyone feels pain. There's no like person out there who's a Terminator, everyone does, it's just how you deal with the pain, that's what the, makes the difference. Either somebody is in the midst of adversity, or just came out of adversity, or it won't be long before they head into adversity. So you need to be prepared either way. And so we all go through adversity opposition. I think that's the thing that, that makes us all in common as people, right? No matter if you're from London, Atlanta, Florida, California, New York, like we're all going to go through something at some point or phase in our life, right? And as cliche as it sounds, when a quote says, it's never about what happens to you, it's about how you respond to it. That's very true. Right. But in the same sense, I think what's most important is when we go through something, what's the perspective that we have of it? Right. Because for most people, when you go through something, the person's natural perspective is, OK, what did I lose? Right. What happened to me? Like I took a loss. Right. People never look at it and say, OK, man, tell me, what did you gain? Right. Even though I know it hurt, you didn't want to go through it. But look at it in a way to where you can say, what's the lesson in this? Right? What would you say life is trying to teach you from dealing with this? And so when I went through it, my perspective was, okay, what can I extract from it to apply to other areas and aspects of my life that I feel can help other people? And I firmly believe the quicker you can shift your perspective from yourself to others when you're in the midst of adversity, the quicker you'll get through it. Right? Martin Luther King has a quote that says, 
Life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing to help other people? Now, I'm not telling you to not acknowledge your pain. I'm not saying that. I'm not telling you not to say, man, I'm going through this and it's hard. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when you go through it, look at it, step back from the picture and say, okay, I'm dealing with this. Nine out of 10 times, there's somebody else that's either dealt with it or they're gonna deal with something similar to this. And if I deal with it in the right way, I can use it to add value to lives of other people. Hold yourself accountable. You know, don't make these excuses. That's it. Hold yourself accountable. Don't make excuses and just have some pride in what you do. Know that it's possible. Just believe in yourself. That's it. It's simple. Believe in yourself and take pride in what you do. Don't ever let anyone say that you can't do it.